Hi there, welcome to the new video. Today we'll be going through this paper which got accepted at ICLR 2020 and it's titled as The Curious Case of Neural Text Degeneration. This is from authors from Allen Institute of Computer Science and Engineering, University of Washington, Allen Institute of Artificial Intelligence and University of Cape Town. So at very high level, the paper introduces a new decoding strategy for text generation systems called nucleus sampling. It's also called top P sampling. So there have been a lot of decoding strategies that have been proposed in past, such as Grady strategy, then you have beam search, then you have sampling based methods. So top P again lies under sampling based method that you use at every time step T for selecting a word while generating any sequence. So the system of text generation usually works like this. So you can think of sequence sequence based models or maybe just vanilla language models at the decoder end. You pass in certain word as an input and the output that you get, let's call it O1, is supposed to be the next word in that sequence. And then you feed that O1 back as an input to the next cell and then it produces O2, which is supposedly the next word. Then this is again fed as an input I3 to the third cell and you get O3 and you keep doing all of this till you get certain special token, let's say EOS, which is end of sequence. So this is the output sequence that you essentially produce. So the way you generate O1, O2, O3 because at this output you'll be getting a softmax distribution across all the vocabulary words that you have at every time step t. So the method of sampling any of the OIs is based on what decoding strategy do you use. Such as in case of greedy decoding, at every time step you can do a argmax over all the vocabulary words that you have and you choose the word that has the maximum probability and you keep doing this at every time step t till you get to the point where EOS has the maximum probability and then you close the generation. So all the previously defined techniques usually fail when you're trying to generate much longer text such as story generation or maybe extended summaries of any paper and they get into this bland, incoherent and repetitive loops, you'll start seeing same phrases being repeated again and again. So this paper came up with this top P sampling or nuclear sampling technique that tries to handle those limitations up to a certain extent. Let's start with the abstract. So as they say, we propose nucleus sampling, which is an effective method for generating considerably higher quality of text. So they achieve this by truncating the unreliable tail of the probability distribution and then sampling from the tokens that have high majority of the probability mass. Okay, so what they mean is, so as we've already seen that this step produces a softmax distribution across entire vocabulary. So let's say if we have two axes, y is the probability and x corresponds to each of the vocabulary words. And this is the distribution that we get. So this is the word O1 that we select in case of greedy decoding because it has highest probability. So nucleus sampling essentially works by truncating the tails of this distribution so that we do not have very large sample size to sample a token from. And then it also selects only the subset of tokens that have very high probability mass. So let's say if we say P is equal to 0.9, then we sum all the words till we get a probability mass of 0.9. Let's say this is that window. So we sample a word from this region. So this is the basic idea behind nuclear sampling. Okay, let's read further. So in this figure, as you can see, the relationship between probability and time step. So consider a model M. If you give it some context C, you ask it to complete for next 100 time steps or next 100 words. So the X axis exactly shows that thing. Like you're trying to generate 100 words and the fluctuations that you see is the probability that gets associated at every time step. So the idea of this graph is to show how beam search is less surprising compared to humans. So as you can see, beam search is mostly circled around something between 0.8 to 1, which means more or less it selects high probability words at every time step. It does have certain fluctuations, but those are very minimalistic in terms of being creative and produce something out of the box. Whereas at the same time, if you see humans, you can see words that are close to zero probability are also something what humans select while writing the text, whereas they also go about selecting high probability words as and when required. So this clearly shows that there is a lot of variance in terms of how humans write a certain piece of text compared to beam search that seems to be little monotonous and repetitive if we ask it to generate longer sequence such as 100 tokens for this example. Also, as you can see in this example, like the state of the art in the field of computer vision and machine learning, this is kind of getting repeated again and again, whereas that is not the case with humans. So this repetitive nature 
is again because of the chart that we just saw that since beam search is mostly concentrated on the higher probability words so it would be kind of trapped in a certain loop and won't be able to explore much in terms of choosing diverse vocabulary words so yeah this was to show one of the drawbacks of beam search which doesn't work quite well when you're trying to generate longer sequences okay Okay, so now they talk about the maximization based decoding, which is again where you choose a sentence that has the maximum likelihood. So beam search is one of the search algorithms that follows this kind of decoding strategy, where you define a beam size, let's say of three. So at every time step T, you sample top three words based on the softmax distribution that you get. And let's say we were supposed to generate four words at the moment. So you have a total of three to the power four sentences that you'll generate. So you can think of traversing from this point, this point to this point, maybe, or maybe like this. So this way you'll have all those sentence combination formed. And at every step of the word, you'll have that probability associated. And for a sentence, you multiply those probability and you'll get a likelihood of that sequence. So the sentence that has the highest likelihood is selected as the final sentence. And then they also have a notion of dividing by the length of the sequence, which you can see like if the sentence length grows, and since we are multiplying probabilities at every time step, the value is supposed to be getting close to zero. So that's why to diminish any factor because of length, we do normalize it by dividing it by its length. So yeah, beam search works like this. So in an ideal scenario, you would want the beam size to be the size of the vocabulary. Then you can think like this number will blow so much because let's say if V is equal to 10,000 and if we were to generate only let's say four words, so 10,000 power four will be the number of sentences that we generate, which is a lot in terms of generating and then comparing which one is the highest. So this problem kind of becomes intractable. So that's why beam search place some kind of an approximation to this okay so yeah here they have given the example let's say if this was one of the web text we want the model to generate couple of words based on this context that we set so authors have shown couple of decoding strategies to how they perform where you have let's say beam search where b is equal to 16 and you can see like this is what model generates so here blue stands for a repetitive nature of the decoding strategy so as you can see like increased by 50 percent in the past year is kind of repeated again and again for beam search because of the reason that we have already seen like it almost selects top band of that probability distribution for sampling the words then you have pure sampling which is like you sample a random word based on the probability distribution or the vocabulary based on softmax that you get so this is what the model generates the red one shows incoherency like this is not much related to the text that we are talking about so clearly since it's based on sampling from the entire vocabulary at every time step the model will have a lot of choice to sample a word from so chances are very high like you'll be sampling things that are not coherent with the text that you want to generate. Then you have sampling based on temperature where t is equal to 0.9. So under this you kind of modify the softmax distribution that you get based on a temperature factor that controls the model brevity in terms of selecting a word by diminishing or exaggerating the probability of any word. So this works like this. So you already know what the softmax. It goes something like this. So for temperature, you divide all the numbers that you get for any vocabulary word by T. So here T ranges from 0 to 1. So if you lower the value of T, X by T becomes big. So will the numerator. So you're kind of trying to push the distribution in a peaked format. Because if X was really high and you divide by a certain number which is close to 0, the overall value of X by T will be really high. Which means you're trying to create a peak at that point which gives model a improved generation quality because now you'll be sampling from that set of highly probable words. Whereas if you increase the T, it creates a distribution that is little flat compared to the earlier one. Hence the range of high probability words increases, which gives model more room for creating diverse sentences by picking up diverse words at every step. So yeah, this is how you play around with temperature under softmax. So with this also you can see like the incoherency has decreased a bit compared to just doing a pure sampling strategy. And then you have top K sampling. So under top k, once you get a softmax distribution at any time step t, and let's say you have a k of 640, so you choose top 640 words based on their probabilities and randomly sample a word from there. So that is how you do top k. Then you have top k with temperature. So there's again a mixture of softmax parameterized by temperature. You'll get certain distribution. Then you do top k, let's say top 40 words from there, and then you sample a word. So this would kind of reduce your scope more in terms of selecting diverse words because now you are narrowing down the set to much smaller subset after having peaked out the distribution based on the temperature because now you can see the model is little monotonous because it has very less number of words to select from. 
then authors finally showed the results which is on nucleus sampling where they said p is equal to 0.95 and there were only two words that were incoherent. There was no repetition behavior that was happening. So nuclear sampling, as we have already seen, goes by adding the probability of each of the words that you get from softmax till you get to the probability mass of 0.95. And then you sample a word from that subset. So that was nuclear sampling. Okay. So in this figure, we can see that the softmax distribution can take these two kind of shapes at any time step t during the sampling process. The first is you can have like a peak distribution, which kind of says like model is confident enough to say these are the two most probable words that I should output at any time instance. So this usually happens after many epochs during the training process, whereas model is highly likely to output the flatter distribution at every time step because during starting phase of the training model is still confused to what should be outputted at certain point. So that's why you kind of see a flattened or a uniform distribution more or less. Let's talk about the flat distribution first. Considering we are comparing two sampling strategies, one is top K and another is top P, which is nuclear sampling. So in case of flat distribution, you'd want to work with top K sampling strategy because more or less all the words will be having the same probability. For example, if you have 10 words in the vocabulary and each word gets 0.1 probability, and let's say you set P to be equal to 0.9. So at that point, you'll be kind of sampling a word from top nine words that you have. Compared to top K, if you have a K value of let's say 3, which will further reduce your scope of sampling a word, which will kind of control the model to let itself free and choose any word from the vocabulary. So that way you should see better generations and less incoherency. Whereas if you talk about the peak distribution, you might want to go with top P sampling strategy because if you take K is equal to let's say 5 in this case, then you'll be sampling from let's say these 5 words of which you can easily figure it out like was and still have a very high probability compared to all the remaining three words. So it doesn't make sense to sample words from there. Instead, if you have a P of let's say 0.8 or 0.9 in this case, the summation of the probability mass of these two words will easily cross that threshold and model can finally select the words from these two words. So that way again, you have kind of controlled the sample size from where you can sample a word. So as per me, top K plus top P is a combination that one should always test out while finalizing the decoding strategy. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, so now we have experiments and all. So we are done with the paper. So if you like what I do, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and do press that bell icon to get timely notifications. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye.